let's see. Our next question is from Radu. How does one decide if the ketogenic diet is beneficial or not? This one's long. We will fill in some details at the end, but there's some really good stuff here. But and like, we'll this post is... all that. He, he includes a lot of his blood work, so we'll yeah. share that in the show notes. This is definitely something that if you want to cruise by and check out the show notes, that would probably be helpful. Okay. So he says, hi, Rob, I would like your opinion regarding how somebody would decide if the ketogenic diet is beneficial or not, or if you have recommendations for tailoring a ketogenic diet to people with increased collection, with an increased cholesterol reaction to the diet. Are there relevant tests that can help in deciding in this regard? In my family history, there are lots of cancers, some heart disease and some neurodegenerative uh, disease like Alzheimer's. I'm 48 years old, ca Caucasian, in very good health and decent physical shape. My diet is a loose paleo type with occasional milk and grains, and I have no allergies. I would like to have some periods of ketosis as I feel some benefits from it, but I do not know how concerned I should be. And then he includes some uh, before and after blood work. So before he went keto, his total cholesterol was 194. Triglycerides were 254. And then nine months after keto, total cholesterol down to 178. Triglycerides down to 44, which is great. And then he repeated this experiment a year later. And uh, his total cholesterol started going up, up to a high of 321. So he is concerned about cholesterol. Yeah. And, and so again, we'll put the specific numbers on here. So what I'm taking from this also is that he tested the blood test after nine months. So he was done with the ketogenic diet. The he, he's one. done. It's been an intermittent thing. Yeah. So he did, yeah. he did it, tested his blood work nine months later. And then a year later did keto again. Keto. And did his blood work throughout. So a, a couple of things here. So uh, this is why I hate standard blood testing because it does not tell us at all what's going on. Uh, just on the cholesterol side, frequently, w if you see the LDL cholesterol fraction, it will say calculated. Uh, what's going on in these scenarios, the um, it, or can occur, depending on what type of test is used, the chylomicrons, which are moving fat out of the gut, can be about the same size as some of the lipoproteins that we're, we're looking for with regards to cholesterol testing. So you could misidentify the chylomicrons as, say, like LDL cholesterol and, or, or cholesterol at large. And so that could give us a really squirrely reading. Um, the, the calculated, like the Friedwald equation to calculate this stuff, was helpful for its day when we had no other options. But what I would really encourage is getting an uh, LDLP uh, particle count via LabCorp. You can order that through Specialty Health in Reno. We can um, put that it, link in the show notes. Yeah, we'll too. put a link in the show notes. If you're outside the United States, then nobody is really doing the LDLP. What you could do is an ApoB, which I think he has an ApoB in there. He did ApoA and ApoB. Which can be kind of a, a proxy for, and the ApoB doesn't look crazy. So I'm almost thinking that some of the cholesterol issues are, are kind of like uh, uh, an artifact of just poor cholesterol testing. But uh, this is, again, where like the type of testing is really important, can be really helpful. Uh, we have a question coming up next here about, I don't know if it's the next one, but one of them, the frequency of like carbohydrate intake and what the effect would be on ketosis. Um, I think intermittent ketosis is going to be great for a lot of people. It's, uh, it, it, there've been some interesting mouse studies where they used an intermittent ketogenic diet, basically one week on, one week off. And we have to remember that the day in mouse metabolic terms is about a week in human metabolic terms. So mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's very, very different. Um, but uh, the, there was, a consistent uh, group of mice that was on a ketogenic diet and they were tracked over over time and their health and performance improved and they had great longevity and health span stuff but they had to limit the food for these mice so that they didn't gain weight and then there was another group that the way that they because this particular strain of mice has a tendency of gaining weight while in ketosis the other group did one week on one week off <coughs> excuse me and they had pretty similar results, although the longevity, lifespan, physical performance pieces. So the, the, they were roughly equal in longevity and lifespan, 
but the keto purely ketogenic mice showed dramatically better physical performance late in life relative mm -hmm. to the cyclic group. So they don't know if that's like a, an energy substrate story, if it uh, some HDAC inhibition due to ketone bodies, like they, they have, but they have some ideas about how to test this stuff so that we can get some further information. So there's probably an assumption here that there's a gradient. Um, reducing carbohydrate in general probably has some performance health and longevity benefits. And again, that's gonna be incredibly relative from person to person. Um, some people are much more carb tolerant and some people are much less. And so th there's going to be a gradation there. But then beyond that, um, intermittent ketosis probably offers benefits above and beyond no ketosis. And then consistent ketosis may have the greatest benefit with regards to this longevity and health span stuff. Now, that's all within the caveat that we aren't worsening an atherogenic environment in our cardiovascular system, which for some people they do seem to, uh, with high saturated fat intake, they, they tend to see dramatically elevated lipoproteins. And we've seen people on both sides of this spectrum. Like we met a guy at Palo FX who has positive coronary calcium scores and has been kind of paleo low carb. And it's, seemingly either not working for them or you don't know maybe it is like you don't really know what else could have been worse mm -hmm. you know but then we have people that have much higher lipoprotein counts than this gentleman has and they are zero on their coronary calcium like they appear to have no overt disease process going on so this is where you know ideally um you, you, all this stuff plays out like the way that Luis Villasenor does this, like his blood works fucking beautiful. It looks great. He has great performance. He definitely doesn't look 42 years old or whatever he is at this point. He's been doing this stuff 20 years. Like I think he's really banking like the maximum benefit of doing something like this. And then you have other folks that, uh, the blood work isn't quite as nice as what we would like. And then it gets a little murky. We need to do some additional testing to see what's going on and that's kind of the way that i would parse parse this stuff out but at a minimum i think that some amount of of intermittency around ketosis could certainly be helpful and that could be time restricted feeding it could be time restricted feeding plus adding mct oil to the mix like this is where there's lots and lots of different ways to tackle this other than just specifically a ketogenic diet. And then even within that, I'll, I'll add one other caveat and then shut up on this. Um, more of a Bernstein-esque, Dr. Bernstein's diabetes solution or a keto gains, like a more protein-centric approach mm -hmm. where we're not driving ketosis uh, at, at the expense of um, protein intake. There are some people that that whole HMG-CoA reductase enzyme system which synthesizes cholesterol, it can convert ketones into cholesterol and, and therefore mm -hmm. lipoproteins. This can and does happen pretty much in everybody, but for some people that spigot is just like wide open. And so their ketones go up and their cholesterol goes up immediately. Mm -hmm. Now, again, there's a question, does, is that meaningful from a cardiovascular disease perspective? And we don't really know. It is, I like Peter Atia's kind of takedown on this, which is that lipoproteins are necessary, but likely not sufficient for cardiovascular disease process. And, and there, there may in fact not be any singular thing that is sufficient for the cardi cardiovascular disease process. I think we've mentioned on other shows that we only see atherosclerotic placking on the arterial side of the vascular system. You don't see any on the venous side where it's at much lower pressure and there's no non-laminar flow. It's all non-turbulent flow. So there's clearly a, a big factor of this, this whole story is uh, hypertension, non-laminar flow, damage or disruption to the vascular endothelium that's a piece of this thing. So if you have high blood pressure and high cholesterol, then it, it, it's game on. And then like elevated and you're eating a pound of uh, 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 sugar, uh, salted <laughs> penis and, and, uh, uh, all that, then, you know, we're stacking the deck in a very unfavorable way, but this is where like just one size fits all broad brushstroke stuff just doesn't fucking cut it anymore. Like we, we have some 
some general guidelines. And again, like if you're the lucky person, then all your stuff looks good and we don't have to, you know, do any other digging, but not everybody falls into these typical patterns. And even within that, the maybe atypical pattern or like the Dave Feldman, like the lean mass hyper responder, we don't really know what the exact story is with these people. Um, I think he had mentioned that he has some cancer Heart and disease Alzheimer's and disease, cancer, Alzheimer's, yeah. neurodegenerative disease. So and there's a pretty, pretty good case to be made that from the cancer and the neurodegenerative disease perspective, a low glycemic load ketogenic type diet is probably beneficial. So maybe you're reducing disease potential in those areas, but possibly elevating disease potential on the cardiovascular disease side. We don't know that for sure, but it, it, you know, there's, there's good material suggesting that if you don't follow the APO 4 E group on Facebook, there's a great, great group of people that um, really stay on top of the research, really sharp folks over there. And this is some of the dueling banjos that they play with, but there have been, there's been some speculation, particularly there are some people in the paleo scene that have been very, very critical of ketogenic diets. And I, I think in a completely unfair way, and they've uh, made some claims around the APO4E folks should avoid ketosis like the plague. And there was uh, the, just some, in, in the, the two pieces that seem to be at play here is cardiovascular disease risk versus neurodegenerative disease risk. So on the one hand, again, you can make the case that the ketone state might be beneficial for neurodegenerative issues, but might be problematic from the cardiovascular disease perspective. And I'm blanking on the paper right now, but there was just a really solid kind of linchpin paper that was like, no, some sort of low carb intervention, including a ketogenic diet is probably G broadly beneficial for APO4E carriers at large, both hmm. for cardiovascular disease and neurodegenerative disease, which has kind of been my gut sense all the way along, but it, it, you never know. You never really know. And again, as always, good until further notice as the science develops. All righty. Damn, I'm a chatty Kathy you, today. You were. You're See, this is what happens when we when move, we move away and we have no, and we... no social interaction. <laughs> then I just fucking talk to the podcast people at Nazi and Nikki's ready to shoot me. 